Welcome back to the channel. In the previous video, we have explained how to work out the maximum bearing pressure under the base of well drained mass concrete retaining wall. If you haven't already seen it, you can find a link in the description below. So, in today's video, we will use the same previous example, however, we will explain how to work out the maximum bearing pressure if the drainage behind the wall becomes blocked, and water rises to the top of the wall. If water is allowed to build up behind a retaining wall, it has two effects. The horizontal pressure from the soil is reduced, because the unit weight of the submerged soil, is effectively reduced due to buoyancy. Hydrostatic pressure from the water, must be added to the soil pressure. The net effect of these changes is to produce a significantly higher horizontal pressure on the wall. For the case where the water level has risen to the full height behind a wall. The pressure becomes, pressure from soil, and water, equals active pressure coefficient, times, unit weight of soil, minus unit weight of water, times height of wall, plus unit weight of water, times height of wall. So. The pressure equals 0.33 times 20 minus 9.81 times 2.25 plus 9.81 times 2.25. We get a value of 29.64 kilonewtons per meter. As a result, for a triangular distributed load, the magnitude of the resultant force is the area of triangle which is 0.5 times 29.64 kilonewtons per meter times the depth 2.25 meters. This results in a value of 33.35 kilonewtons. Therefore, the overturning moment equals the resultant force 33.35 kilonewtons times height 2.25 meters divided by 3. This gives us a value of 25 kilonewtons meter. As a consequence, eccentricity of the vertical force equals overturning moment 25 minus the vertical force 62.25 times the distance from base center 0.05 meters divided by the vertical force 62.25. This gives us a value of 0.352 meters, which is greater than 1.25 meters divided by 6. In other words, the resultant is outside middle third. Clearly when this occurs, the tensile stress from bending exceeds the compressive stress from the self-weight. The application of equation combined axial force and bending would indicate a region of tension at the base of the wall which we have already indicated is not appropriate. It is assumed that a tension crack forms over the tensile region. The compressive stress forms a triangle. In order to satisfy both, vertical, and rotational equilibrium, we know the following. The area of the stress triangle represents a force, which must equal the vertical resultant force. The vertical resultant force must pass through the centroid of the triangle, which occurs at a point one third of the way along the base of the triangle. Therefore, x equals half 1.25 meters minus 0.351 meters, which is equal to 0.274 meters. So, the maximum bearing pressure would be 2 times 62.25 kilonewtons divided by 3 divided by 0.274 meters. We get a value of 151.5 kilonewtons per square meter. The loss of tensile stress means that the value of 151.5 kilonewtons per square meter is greater than the value obtained in the previous video, 85.7 kilonewtons per square meter. We can therefore conclude that when tensile stress cannot be supported, equation used in the previous video, can only be used if the vertical resultant force lies within the middle third of the base. However, the member has not yet collapsed, even though a tension crack has formed. A tension crack is unacceptable for two reasons. Firstly, the material immediately above the crack is also put into tension, and hence may also crack. 
Secondly, the repeated action of frost and debris entering the crack can cause progressive leaning of the structure. As the position of the resultant nears the edge of the base, the value of maximum bearing pressure increases significantly until it exceeds the compressive strength of either the structure or the foundation material. As the material crushes, it forms a pivot, and when the resultant vertical force moves beyond the pivot point, results in collapse. Finally, checking the factor of safety against sliding, we should follow similar to steps that we have used in the previous video. We just need to replace the horizontal pressure by pressure due to soil and water, which is 33.35 kilonewtons. Therefore, factor of safety equals 37.35 plus 7.5 divided by 33.35. This results in a value of 1.34. Key point summary, remember that the resultant vertical force for gravity retaining walls must remain within the middle third of the wall's base to ensure that the entire base remains in compression. Thanks for watching. We hope you found some useful tips. Check out our website at structuralengineercalcs.com. Please like and subscribe, and let us know what would you like to see next. The human footprint is a masterpiece of engineering and a work of art. Stay safe. Goodbye, and see you soon.